Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this, your Gemini March 2024 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant. Well, this month we're using a deck that's actually hard for me to pick what the card is. Just, uh, just by a quick glance at it, I have to have a look at the imagery on it. And uh, it's called Raphael or Raphaelite or something like that. I can't remember what it is. There's a box around somewhere. I just tend to wrap things up in a string. And, uh, but anyway, the, it, it's sort of like a uh, Renaissance type uh, artwork, I suppose, is what you'd say. And, you know, it's quite, uh, it's quite enjoyable, I think. Certainly, it, it will give us a good reading. And it's great to see the subscribers back again. And it's, uh, thank you very much for welcoming me into your home. I truly enjoy your company. Really, I do. Now, I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings for Geminis over the course of the last month from different countries around the world via FaceTime and Skype. And if you might be interested to see what's involved in a clairvoyant reading with me, then just check out the information that's in the description box when you get to the end of the video. Now also in there, you'll see information which is to do with healing. Now I was provided at birth with two spiritual gifts, clairvoyance and healing. Clairvoyant uh, readings I charge for, but healing, healing was given to me on the basis that I get nothing in return for it. So healing is provided for free. There's no catch. There's no uh, recommendations of any products or services from me. You won't be suggested by me to have a reading or anything. It is what it is and the healing comes through me and not from me. Now I'm to use the gift, so if you have any emotional or physical issue, uh, then please get hold of me. I am to use the gift. Now, let me see, we're going to take five cards. Google should have put no ads in this content, so you ought to be able to see it uh, all the way through without interruption for the benefit of your experience. And the, and the subscribers, it's great to see you again. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. Did I say that? Well, look, we're going to take the five cards. Five's all we need because we don't spend just two seconds on them, do we? Oh no, they're very talkative to us. So show me the magic. Looks like the High Priestess, I would say. There is the Five of Wands. That looks like the Queen of Cups. And I'm sure that is the Hermit. It's wandering around there with a lantern. We'll see it in just a second. And finally, what is there? Oh, I love this card. The Star. Well, why don't you come now? I'll bring the camera around. You and I can come and sit next to me. You and I can have a good close look at the imagery that's on these cards together. Let them speak to us both while I do the reading for you. Gee, a lot of really positive working on yourself. And uh, it's a time you might become very influenced by what's going on out there and the troubles that surround you, but you'll overcome it. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Now you've got one, two, three major arcana, a court, and a minor arcana. Let's do the major arcana, shall we? This is uh, the High Priestess, or as I call her, the Priestess of the Silver Star. Now, let's have a look at her here, shall we? I think that this is a time when you are going to have access to your intuitive powers. I think you'll be undergoing a time of healing as well. I think it's a time when you'll have independence and a great desire for independence. But you know what's coming with it? A great degree of increased self-confidence. And you'll be discovering your own truth. Now, stay in contact with your spirit guides at this time. They do look after you, you know. But it's a period of great emotional stability for you. Although I'll get to that queen in um, due course. I think, like her, you are going to be in touch with your intuitive abilities and you'll be able to trust them completely. You will perceive and connect with your own inner voice, your internal guide and healer. Now this will show outwardly, I think, in your trust in and responsibility to yourself. Look after yourself. You deserve some nurturing. 
Now, like the camel, which can travel long stretches in the desert without water, you, when you have discovered your own inner spring, then you will radiate a satisfied sense of self-sufficiency. You will find fertile oasis, and oases, plural, in the deeper reaches of your being. And the more you accept yourself and share with others, the deeper the clarity of your perceptions will become. Now, this book that she's holding on her lap here, I would say that that means that she is holding the key or the way to the Akashic Records. I won't go into those in detail now, but just to put it in a nutshell, they are universal knowledge. Now, she has the gift of knowing how to channel into the collective memory of the past, present, and future. You understand, don't you, that on the other side, there is no time as we know it. There is only a constant present. But channeling into yourself, you will resolve blocks that disturb your inner peace and balance. Now, I think she holds the universal secrets the answers and the mysteries, and these are going to be shared with you through prayer, meditation, maybe in dreams as well, so pay attention to your dreams at this time, and even get out into nature and walk around and listen to it. Her message to you is to trust your inner self and intuition. Now, she is going to bring harmony and balance to situations that have been disturbed, I think, for you and she represents the beginning of a creative cycle. She brings time for just looking within yourself and bringing together opposing aspects that are within yourself. I think this is really a time for going within. I notice that this is reinforced by this card here, which I'll get to in just a moment. And it's important that you also experience your dark, mysterious self and balance that experience with your conscious self. Now, understanding and honoring both your dark and your light can open up the doorway to the inner oasis of your soul. Now, I think it's also the case that there could well be the beginning of a platonic relationship that is a social relationship here. And it's a time of moving ahead and making the necessary change. But you understand, too, changes on the inside are necessary to make changes on the outside, don't you? And there is a need now for you to connect and be more confident with your intuitive side and maybe go with the flow with life at the moment. You see, you now have access to your intuitive powers, so develop them more fully and guard your independence. Ah, are there areas in your life in which you allow others to influence you rather than trusting your own intuition? Now, is this water in the background here? I think anyway that you should seek out water as often as you can. Look at it, learn from it. This is a time when you should say to yourself that I trust my intuitive abilities. I deeply honor and value the human being that I am. I am intuitive and perceptive. I trust myself and honor my sense of integrity. Now, I mentioned this card below it, so let's have a look at it, shall we? And it is the Hermit. Hello, Hermit. Doing his usual Hermit-like thing. Now, <clears throat> what are you saying in this context with these other cards around? Well, I think that He's saying that this could well be a time that you are searching for answers because this represents the person who is stepping out of the darkness and shining their lantern, illuminating the way. 
Now, in the Roman numerals here, that, that's nine. Well, nine is the sacred number. If you take any number and multiply it by nine and get a result and then individually add up the numbers in the result, breaking them down to the, to the lowest uh, numeric values, you will always end up with the number nine. If you take 2,577,000 times nine, it will add up to nine. And nine fours are, nine threes are 27, two and seven are nine, nine fours are 36, three and six are nine. It goes on and on and on and on. Well, I think that what's happening here is that there's an energy that's coming about bringing an, an inner guiding light to you, showing you the way, bringing a spiritual wisdom in a sense. Now, when you are seeking guidance or healing or understanding, this energy here really sets, sets behind you as the wise one or the guide helping you along your journey to recognize the deeper value of life. And he represents guidance through dreams again, visions, archetypes. I think that the lesson that he offers on your journey through life is the light of love, the appreciation of simplicity, self-respect, and freedom from the material world. Now, the hermit teaches that spiritual wisdom, it comes from the heart and not from the head. You see, what he is doing is he has set out in search of internal fulfillment and has found the light within. He is so fulfilled by the wealth of the inner realm that the external world actually appears to be colorless and unimportant. Now, I'm not saying that you should ignore the external world at all. I think what this is doing is to say, concentrate sometimes on the inner world. Then you have the proper balance as you go through life. But what he is saying is that there's no reason to chase after the deceptive light of those things which are external and which change all the time. Now he is also saying, I think that you may well find that you are a counselor or a mentor to somebody at this time, people coming to you. You'll have a great degree of wisdom. And the things that you tell people to help them, it's almost as if they come to you by way of divine inspiration. This is a time of finding your own light, of going inward, completing things, tying off things about yourself, resting in your own center. I think what you'll also do is that, with the advice of this energy here, is, is that you will get away from a situation in order to get a better insight into that situation. I think it's also the case that you might well come across something that you were previously in the dark about. You might even uncover some secret or secrets here. You may be spending some time alone. Well, don't concern yourself with people who don't understand you, who would rather see you as being part of the herd. But you might ask yourself this question, do you have any unresolved situations or relationships in your life? This is the time to tie them off and make a list of all situations which you now wish to resolve or in some way bring to completion. Now you see, because whoever embarks on the search for the internal light must not be held back by unresolved conflicts. Accounts must be settled. But say this to yourself, if you are alone, I enjoy my aloneness because I can stop being alone wherever I wish. And I enjoy the feeling of completion and resolution. I will not compromise on that which is important to me. Now, who do we have on the bottom? There was another major arcana. This woman, the star. Now, 
the star. What's she got going on? Well, first of all, this is the sun ruling Aquarius with Neptune exalted. I call her the daughter of the firmament. Do you know every woman? Every woman is a star. Now the sun in Aquarius, well, Aquarius is all about the individual and uniqueness. And Aquarius has an overall community and humanitarian outlook, I think. Well, the star shares these qualities in that, that it is trying to remind you about the divinity and the uniqueness which lives inside you while encouraging you to be a, um, a pipe for bringing down your highest potential. A lot of inspiration for you, I think, and making things happen, crystallizing them. A self-recognition here, a trust in yourself, which also comes from that High Priestess that we saw there earlier, and this connection to universal intelligence. Well, that was reflected also in this dealings with the um, the Akashic records that this Empress had there, I think. But this, so it, they're all connected in a way, these cards. But this also speaks to me of hope, of happiness, opportunities, optimism, and cosmic blessings raining down upon you. This is a beautiful process. The cosmic inspiration of the highest nature is being given to you and all around you it's being made tangible on the material plane. I think there's a new crystal clear vision which is going to, which finally is going to take shape even though only a moment ago it was just some sort of a uh, a vague thought or an impression, and you are gaining a more penetrating view into the boundless potential of your development. The power of inspiration really gives you wings and it lets your soul soar and the apparently impossible is going to be achieved and made manifest in ways that you just really can't explain, in marvelous ways. Now, I think you'll also find that other people are going to be drawn to you as if by a magnet because of this radiating force within you. And the sheer force of spiritual transformation causes the masks of personality to somehow become meaningless. You are going to be who you are. Now, I see that there is a star that's on there that's, that's almost like an antenna. And, and, and that receptive antenna that you have, you've got to make sure that you regularly clean it. Because if the reception is disturbed by self-seeking tendencies, then these tremendous energies that are at hand can have a devastating effect Enthusiasm could become fanaticism. Inspiration could become illusion. And the emotions need to be carefully watched at the moment as well. Let your emotions flow. If you repress and control emotions, then they stagnate. Let your star rise and stay in contact with the earth. Trust your environment and find ways to let others share in it. You'll be tested and recognized by the fruits that you bear, you know. I think this is a time you're going to feel fulfilled and inspired by life. And it's a reminder for you to follow your dreams and those dreams which give you the most inspiration and be open to love and trust creation and what it brings. And I think encouragement is now being given to you that, oh, I do think you've had some testing times in the past, haven't you? But now's the time to move forward with renewed hope and live an inspired life that you can express yourself fully in. Now, ask yourself, are you totally fulfilled in your present area of work? 
and check to see if you are doing everything possible to bring your ideas into reality. And say this to yourself, my creative powers of imagination and my connection to an all-encompassing consciousness, well, they show me the way to realize my ideas. And I can see what can be of benefit to people around me because I am a radiant light being. I am a star that walks upon a bigger star. Now, what's underneath her? Let's have a look. Ah, the queen of the thrones of the waters. Well, I was known as a queen of cups. She's Gemini all over this, you know. I think cancer could also be important to you during this period. Do you know, when she shows up in the middle like this with these two cards there and the star at the bottom, she's asking you to reflect upon the deeper aspects of yourself. What dream or vision is calling you? What watery realms within are starting to shift? You see, this energy has shown up to help you through emotional transitions. Now, when challenges confront you, she reminds you to remember what brings true happiness to your heart. And she asks you in particular to be gentle with yourself as well as with others. And she's inspiring you to live your life through love, to follow what your heart seeks by listening and trusting your intuition without judgment. She teaches you that Prayer and meditation can bring you information and healing on many levels. So do it. And she's asking you to embrace your inner heartfelt truth rather than fighting it. With her by your side, you will dream deeply and be extra sensitive to the energies and inspirations that open up your heart, that, that light up your creative your creative spirits and inspirations, so listen for them. But there's another thing going on here, I think, which is to say that you could well be very much affected by what's going on around you at the moment, in particular what people are doing or saying, the events that are occurring, they're going to have impact on you. It's almost as if you suck them into you and they go through you and you reflect those things back to them. I think this is a period where you will be very intuitive. Not surprisingly, I suppose, given these other cards that are here, you'll be a good observer. You may actually find, as a result of this process, that you are actually tranquil, almost poetic. You could have some psychic awareness, you know. You'll be able to see yourself in other people and also see through other people and reflect that back to them. Emotions will be shown openly. A great degree of motherhood, parenthood around here. But there's the case that you are going to be emotionally mature and you'll be able to get along with and relate to your friends in a very deep way. And you'll be able to go within yourself and be at one with yourself. Nevertheless, I think you'll be quite practical and you'll be able to communicate your feelings and realizations to others in a very understandable way. There is an age, though, and it, it's following on from these other things that we've spoken of, that there is the need to get in touch with your inner feelings and be able to express those to other people. And there's the need to develop intuitively emotionally, and relate to other people emotionally. You know that by showing your feelings openly, you become beautiful. Now, there may be people who don't understand you, who don't concern yourself about it, because there are enough other people with whom you can share your feelings. Now, you might ask yourself, are you really open to your emotions and feelings? I mean, really, truly? because you should trust your feelings 
and live in harmony with them and say this to yourself, my openness and vitality makes me beautiful. Now, when I said here that you could be affected by events going on around you, it's particularly important when it comes to this energy, which is coming here as a warning, I think, to say, just step back. Don't get sucked into dramas that other people want to bring in. Don't become part of the soap opera, if you know what I mean. Here we have the five. Now, five is actually generally unstable, unstable, and they have Mars associated with them as well, which is quite aggressive. But the astrology of this particular card where it is, is that of Saturn in the first decan of Leo. Now, Saturn and Leo don't get on. Main reason being is that Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius, and that is directly in opposition to Leo. So that's a problem astrologically. But also, Leo wants to be creative and express itself. Well, on one view, Saturn is cold, dense, and wants to set boundaries and limits. But Saturn actually, I don't want to give Saturn a bad rap, because Saturn's actually, Saturn actually is about bringing you to, to conform to your soul contract and your soul path. Now, here we have the Five of Wands. Now, we have Wands as a Fire suit. Leo is a fire sign, and it's added to by this energy, fiery energy, that I have in the numerology of five with Mars. So we have all this, this fire going on, and Saturn, in a way, comes in and tries to dampen down all of this. So the astrological energies are in discord, and so there is the temptation, perhaps, to feel restricted, or for you to feel that there is an unfulfilled desire or that you have to strain yourself for things. Now, remember that you learn by, you learn things through what you've gone through. And sometimes you need to struggle and put in effort for things. And, but this brings with it the opportunity for expansion and renewal. And internally, the fiery energy of wands kind of sets a light a restlessness within you that doesn't want to be held back. Now, th there could well be moments where everything seems to be shifting and moving in different directions. The calm, comfortable place that you once lived in might feel as if it's shaken, but the way to look at this energy is to hold on to your spiritual center as both the inner self and the outer self confront change because you have the strength here and work out a path to get round conflict now holding your spiritual center has got nothing to do with your ego your spiritual center is your inner personal power where you can find peace and balance but because this five has appeared it's got something to say and it says that it can bring breakthroughs in your lifestyle and your values and your ideas that forces you to confront and burn away outgrown beliefs and patterns, moving you into transformation and growth. And this is saying, participate, be part of the contest, because this powerful energy is going to push you forward to victory and to a happy life. Well, what a fan fantastic set of cards for you and didn't you do a good job well done yes you did a really good job in that reading and what a fantastic and interesting month it looks like it's going to be for you and don't you deserve it it's great to see you and uh and you deserve all the good things in life really you do now unless i see you privately for a reading or a healing then i'll see you again next month and until then remember one thing and it is this that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.